Hasseltine. Mr. Hasseltine is credited with inventing the plastic bread wrapper, which lends itself to the old paradigm that there's a lot of dough in plastic bags. This is pretty much the original condition from when it was built 100 years ago. Definitely maintained by a guy from Alexandria Bay, just like it was 100 years ago. The millionaires came to the islands and they hired all the local people as boatmen, groundskeepers, cooks, servants. Uh, at that time, pretty much single-handedly drove the economy here at the Thousand Islands. Like a lot of the island people, uh, this was before unemployment, it was a seasonal job. A lot of the uh, owners actually paid the people to work, or paid the people all year long, although they only worked seasonally. And here at the head of the island, you can see uh, you, we actually have a turn of the century satellite dish right there. Three. Got a couple shoals off to the right hand side of the tour. And what I do, I want you to understand what exactly one is. This is Wawanet on the right hand side. This was the site of a Wawanet hotel and restaurant. Popular night spot during the 40s. Now this uh, popularity kind of dropped off during the 60s. You can see the foundation, the uh, original building was destroyed by fire. Twice. Took two tries. Had to go out and get another match and another can of gasoline. The next island on the right is called Jewel or Stony Crest. This also had a large mansion on it at one time. The mansion had to be torn down, and one third of the island actually blocked to interfere with that navigational aid on the far side of the islands. Doesn't look it, uh, but there's kind of a bend in the river here. I want people to be well aware of that. This is Keewayton State Park on our left, uh, one of the smaller state parks here, but this is the administrative headquarters for all 26 parks in the region. This home has the unique distinction of being the only home still in the family of the, re the original builder, built back in the late 1800s. Okay, we'll cross Coming up on the right behind at the head of uh, Comfort Island is called Namavan. Namavan was built uh, by a gentleman named James Oldman. He was a stockbroker from New York City. Unfortunately, he only got to use it for a few short years. Mr. Oldman was killed by one of his clients when he made some bad investments in the man lost all the money. This was originally two separate islands. You look over, you can see this little fence that goes through there. They actually filled in between the two islands to make one. Excuse me, can you keep your voice down a little bit? Thanks. Excuse me. You can see Kuwaitan State Park Marina over on the left-hand side. It doesn't look it, but this is a very popular marina. Several reasons. All the rest of the homes that I'm going to talk about today are only lived in during the summer months. Anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months out of the season. This is owned by a retired dentist, Dr. Robert Tagg. He lived here all his life. Found out a few years ago, Doc Tagg actually made his uh, worked his way through dental school as a tour guide on one of the tour boats. Apologize for the bumps. Uh, they haven't gotten out to fix all the potholes out here yet. Feel free to dial that number 1-800-POTHOLE and report them. Now this island on the left is uh, also kind of a unique picturesque island. This is called Longview. Uh, locally we call it Artificial Island. And there's a story that goes along with that. At the turn of the century, a gentleman named Hudson Rose came to the Thousand Islands, told his wife to pick out one of the islands, he would buy it, build a summer home. Now we've made our turn, we've entered the main shipping channel of the St. Lawrence Seaway. See the markers on either side. And the, uh, shipping channel. Shipping channel. <laughs> St. Lawrence Seaway, the longest, largest, inland, fresh water navigable waterway in North America. Probably 2,300 miles, all the way from the western tip of Lake Superior to the Atlantic Ocean. This time, 30 miles behind us is the first of the Great Lakes going west, Lake Ontario. About 800 miles ahead of us is the 
we could build them. The ship was coming in faster than could be pumped out. After a few hours, they came to this conclusion, ordered the crew off the ship. The crew stood on the dock over here on our left-hand side at the Coast Guard station and watched the Jodhry sink to the bottom. We are just about directly over the bow at this time. The stern lies 630 feet towards the head of Terry Island. Don't look over the side, you can't see it. We're at 250 feet of water right here. The Jodhry was carrying taconite, which are iron ore pellets used to make iron ore. The insurance companies didn't want to sign off on the ship until they could, re until they could find out whether it would be, be salvaged or not. In June of the following year, they sent down two divers. Only one of them returned. The safety line on the second diver snapped. The current is very swift in this section. Very deep, very dark. As soon as the other remaining diver returned, the insurance company immediately signed off on the vessel. We do get a lot of scuba divers here on the job. Although they will tell you it's called a five flag dive. On a scale of one to five, the five being the most difficult. The value of the job rate its cargo back in 1974, two million dollars. Oh well haul on the old last of the bolt holdings here in the Thousand Islands. Up until 1992, owned by Cobra Bolt Ferry. Island is called Pulpit or Castle Rest. 